Hey guys, Risqué here and welcome to my blind Mass Effect playthrough. Um, okay, so first things first, I am considering this blind because although I've played like the very beginning of the first game before like several years ago, I really don't remember anything and I didn't get far at all. So this is a blind playthrough in my opinion and then we're gonna do the whole trilogy. Uh, we just finished Crash so I needed to start a new series. And so yeah, we're gonna start on the first Mass Effect. Uh, it's been a while, I'm still waiting on those two to install, but thankfully we don't need that to happen yet. So let's just jump right in and start playing Mass Effect 1, shall we? I'm excited, I'm really excited. Now last time we tried to do this, it didn't start. Oh, please. Oh, thank God. Okay, there we go. Mass Effect 1, press any button, can do. I'm really excited though. I'm super excited to play this game. I, it looks really fun. I love games where, you know, you have to make choices and that is one of those games. Okay, let's start new career. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified information requested. Establishing secure connection. Secure connection confirmed. Okay, mm, part of me does want to play as like the original male Shep, but part of me also wants to create my own because you know how much I love character creation. Oh, okay. Um, you know what? I'm just gonna be me. What? What can I do? Custom female. Here we go. Okay. Uh, we'll just do this the way I'm doing this in all of our games, where I can name the character. Okay. Please log in to access your profile. Oh wait, hold on. Oh wait, shoot! Can I change the name? I meant to do Risque Plays. Oh well, I guess we'll find out. Warning, data corruption detected. Please reconstruct profile. Confirm pre-service history. Okay, so we can be a spacer. Uh, both of your parents were in the Alliance military. Your childhood was spent on ships and stations as they transferred from posting to posting, never staying in one location for more than a few years. Following in your parents' footsteps, you enlisted at the age of 18. Or we can be a colonist. I don't really like the sound of that. It sounds too much like colonizer. Uh, you were born and raised on Mindor, a small border colony in the Attican Traverse. Tra Traverse? Tra I don't know. Uh, when you were 16, slavers raided Mindor. Doyer? Doyer? slaughtering your family and friends. You were saved by a passing alliance patrol and you enlisted with the military a few years later. I like a tragic backstory. I can't lie. Okay, Earthborn. You were an orphan raised on the streets of the great megatropolises covering Earth. You escaped the life of petty crime and underworld gangs by enlisting with the alliance military when you turned 18. Um, let's be the colonist, actually. I changed my mind. I like a tragic backstory. Confirm psychological profile. Uh, during your service, a mission you were on went horribly wrong. Trapped in an extreme survival situation, you had to overcome physical torments and psychological stresses that would have broken most people. You survived while all those around you fell, and now you alone are left to tell the tale. Okay, war hero. Early in your military career, you found yourself facing an overwhelming enemy force. You risked your own life to save your fellow soldiers and defeat the enemy despite the impossible odds. Your bravery and heroism have earned you medals and recognition from the Alliance fleet. I mean, that sounds kind of nice, but I don't want to be a war hero. Uh, let's see, throughout your military career, you have been... You have held fast to one basic rule, get the job done. You've been called cold, calculating, and brutal. Your reputation for ruthless efficiency makes your fellow soldiers wary of you, but when failure is not an option, the military always goes to you first. I'm a Scorpio, so we're going ruthless. Confirm I like it. Military specialization. Okay, so soldiers. Soldiers are combat specialists ideal for the front lines of a firefight. Soldiers have improved health, can specialize in the use of all weapon types, start with the ability to wear medium armor, and can train in the use of heavy armor. Okay, engineer. Engineers are tech specialists. Using the holographic omni-tool, they can decrypt security systems, repair or modify technical equipment, disrupt enemy weapons or shields, and heal their squad. Engineers can only wear light armor, and they specialize in pistols. 
and all like that. Adept. Adepts are biotic specialists. They're through upgradable implants, they can use biotic powers to lift or throw objects, shield the squad, and disable or destroy enemies. Adepts can wear only wear light armor and they specialize in pistols. Infiltrator. Infiltrators combine combat and tech abilities to specialize in killing or disabling enemies at long range. Infiltrators are trained to use Omni tools focusing on decryption and offensive abilities rather than healing. They can specialize in pistols or sniper rifles and wear medium armor. Let's see, Sentinels. Sentinels combine biotic and tech abilities. Typically they use biotic abilities and advanced healing skills to defend allies, though they can also disrupt opponents with biotic or tech attacks. They are more efficient in tech and biotics than other classes, but are at the, exper at the expense of combat, I can read. Sentinels can only wear light armor and receive no specialized weapon training. Okay, or Vanguard. Vanguards are biotic warriors. They combine biotics and weapons to take down opponents and are especially deadly at short range. They specialize in pistols and shotguns and wear medium armor. I think I like the sound of that. That sounds kind of cool. Let's do that. Confirm facial identification. Uh, yes, I would like to change my appearance. I want to look like me. Okay, facial structure. Oh, okay, let's see. Um... I'm like looking at myself in the camera and trying to like match it. <clears throat> Let's do that. And I am pretty pale, so uh, yeah, we'll do one of those. Complexion. Okay, I like that. <laughs> I feel like I have a good complexion for the most part. <clears throat> okay. Head. Oh Jesus. Okay. I don't have that thick of a neck. Uh, my face is fine. Check with ears orientation. Okay, th this is fine, honestly. Uh, let's see. Eyes. I want to change the color for sure. Let's see. There's like a nice light blue. Okay, there's gray and green. It's like a deep blue. Okay, we'll do that. It kind of looks like my eyes. Okay. Uh, jaw. Uh, the jaw is fine. Mouth. I have bigger lips than that. Okay, it's better. And, I don't know. I kind of feel like that's fairly accurate. Nose, uh, let's see. Look this way. I do have a big-ass nose, unfortunately. Um, so we'll just do some of this. Yeah, that's fine. Hair, here we go. This is what I want to... Okay, let's make me blonde. Okay, yeah, that's as blonde as we get. Good to know, good to know. Oh, Jesus, okay, uh, let's see. Let's... I would like a long style, if possible. I may have to do like a ponytail. Oh, wow, okay. I mean, that's kind of cute, I guess. Um, Jesus, Jesus. I could do a ponytail. You know, I think I might do that. Uh, let's see. These brows are kind of scary. That one's, uh, well, we'll do that. Okay, cool, makeup. Um, I like to have some nice pink blush. And I also like to have, usually, I, I like to go with like a classic bright red lip. So we'll go with that. And then eyeshadow, oof. Um, I like to do, like, a blue eyeshadow, usually. There we go. Okay! Scar! Uh, I don't need a scar. Wait. I don't want a scar. There we go. Okay! Cool! Finalize. I like it. Here we go. Profile reconstruction complete. Okay, um, but can I... Hold Confirm on. Confirm facial identification. Confirm up here. Oh. I, I want to change my name, though. I guess I can't. Profile reconstruction complete. Okay. All right, that's fine. Identification confirmed. Combat difficulty. Boss is scaled up based on the player's level. Some enemies have special protection. Let's see. Casual. All enemies, including bosses, are scaled down relative to the player's level. Some enemies... Eh, let's do normal. Auto level up. Points must be manually assigned using the squad screen each time Shepard or any squad member gains a level. Uh... I'll do squad only, because that's too many people. I don't have time. <laughs> points automatically assigned to appropriate talents. Each time a squad member gains a level, points must be manually assigned using the squad screen whenever Shepard gains a level. Okay, cool. 
Legendary mode. In classic mode, the original 1 to 60 level range will be used instead of the new 1 to 30 level range. XP and talent points progression remains the same, but the number of levels is doubled. Um, let's just go ahead and do legendary mode and just keep it the same. Okay, so on subtitles, good. Squad power usage. Uh, I guess, well, well, yeah, let's just do all. Auto save, sure. Well, mm, well, mm. <laughs> yeah, we'll do auto save. Okay. Yay! 10 minutes in, we're finally getting started. How about that? Well, what about Shepard? She grew up in the colonies. She knows how tough life can be out there. Her parents were killed when slavers attacked Mindwar. She got most of her unit killed on Torfin. She gets the job done, no matter what the cost. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. I'll make the call. In the year 2148, explorers on Mars discovered the remains of an ancient spacefaring civilization. In the decades that followed, these mysterious artifacts revealed startling new technologies, enabling travel to the furthest stars. The basis for this incredible technology was a force that controlled the very fabric of space and time. They called it the greatest discovery in human history. The civilizations of the galaxy call it Mass Effect. That was perfect timing. That was awesome. <laughs> Where's my weed? I'm sitting on it. The Arcturus Prime relay is in range, initiating transmission sequence. Commander. We are connected. Calculating transit mass and destination. The relay is hot, acquiring approach vector. All stations secure for transit. Thrusters, check. Navigation, check. Internal emission sync engaged. All systems online. Drift, just under 1500k. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. I hate that guy. Nihilus gave you a compliment. So you hate him. You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. The Council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. That's enough. Your soldiers act like it. Sorry, Commander. Joker! Status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the comm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? Great. You pissed the captain off and now I'm gonna pay for it. <laughs> Don't blame me. The captain's always in a bad mood. Only when he's talking to you, Joker. Saving content. Awesome. Okay, let's get a handle of my surroundings. Press the options button to access the mission, compu mission computer and view journal and codex entries. Okay. Alright. I like this. Journal. 
Prologue on the Normandy. You are Lieutenant Commander Shepard, Executive Officer on the SSV Normandy. Okay, so that's just, okay. Gotcha. Squad, who's in my squad? The squad screen lets you view your team's talents. Use the directional pad to select a talent or its rank. Press X to spend a talent point to gain a rank in the selected talent. As you gain levels, you will acquire talent points and unlock higher per higher ranks. I can't read. Okay, so pistols, assault training, throw, warp. Oh, I have, awesome. Okay, um. Yeah, let's go ahead and do throw and warp, I guess. Oh, and then we have all of these. Vanguard. Vanguards are trained for close range combat and can use their own abilities to counter enemy biotic attacks. Okay. Charm. Charm options and conversations will be grayed out if you do not have. Okay, well, let's start doing charm. Because y'all know me, especially if you're watching my Fallout playthrough. I really like charisma and charm and all of that. Okay, that's fine. Uh, codex. Oh, shoot. Uh, personal history summary and then humanity and the systems alliance. Okay, let's start here. Okay, so... You were raised on Mendor. I can't, I don't know how to say that. On the fringes of the Afri Attican Traverse. Blah, blah, blah. All you loved was destroyed. You enlisted with the Alliance military, joining the long and bloody campaign to rid the Sky Skylian? Sure. Verge of Batarian slavers and other criminal elements. I'm sure all these words will make sense to me at some point later. Uh, the final battle came when Alliance forces laid siege to Torfan, a slaver base built miles below the surface of a desolate moon. The superiority of the human fleet was wasted in the assault on, on the underground bunker, but you led a corps of elite ground troops into the heart of the enemy base. Nearly three quarters of your own squad perished in the vicious close quarters fighting, a cost you were willing to pay to make sure not a single slaver made it out of Torfan alive. I'm a badass. <laughs> I love that. Okay. <clears throat> cool. So we viewed that. Humanity and the Systems Alliance. 20... Oh. Yeah, 2069, Armstrong Outpost at Shackleton Crater becomes the first human settlement on Luna. It is formally founded on July 24th, the 100th anniversary of the first lunar landing. A uh, little city in Eos Chasma? I don't know. Becomes the first human settlement on Mars. Uh, Eldfell, Ashland Energy Corporation, demonstrates helium-3 fuel extraction from the atmosphere of Saturn. Oh, I keep missing the years, so my bad about that, y'all. <coughs> Wait, how? Oh. Oh no, okay, I don't have time for that. <laughs> I give up. Okay. So I guess there's Joker, there's Caden. Okay. Um What? We're getting dragged right along with Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? Sounds like you don't trust our Turian guest. Sorry, Commander, just having a chat with Adams down at Engineering. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. But you have to admit, something's odd about this mission. The whole crew feels it. You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? If all we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system, why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run. It doesn't add up. I'll see if I can get some answers when I see him. Good luck, Commander. Thank you. Can we talk to all these people? Galaxy map, Corporal Jenkins. Who? Okay. Oh, over there on the other side, gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, I should probably just go ahead and talk to the captain. Commander Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. What about? I'm interested in this world we're going to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. I've never been there. But you know of it. It's become something of a symbol for your people, hasn't it? Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? If you've got something to say, just say it. Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. I figured there was something you weren't telling us. 
We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. There must be a reason you didn't tell me about this, sir. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need-to-know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years ago. Their legacy still remains. The mass relays, the Citadel, our ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is Big Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. Are we expecting trouble? I'm always expecting trouble. There's more, Shepard. Nihilus isn't just here for the beacon. He's also here to evaluate you. Since when do we answer to the Spectres? You're smart enough to know how things work, Commander. The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. I was impressed when I studied the reports from Torfin. A grim business, but you got the job done. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. I assume this is good for the Alliance. Earth needs this, Shepard. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. What do you know about the Protheans? Just what they taught us in school. They were a technologically advanced species that ruled the galaxy 50,000 years ago. Then they vanished. Nobody really knows how or why, though I've heard plenty of theories. But everyone agrees, galactic civilization wouldn't exist without them. Their citadel is the very heart of galactic society, and without their mass relays, interstellar travel would be impossible. We all owe the Protheans a great debt. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds, to forge a place for humanity beyond Earth. It symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species. And after this, it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance. Why is this beacon so important? All advanced galactic civilization is based on Prothean technology, even yours. If we hadn't discovered those Prothean ruins buried on Mars, we'd still be stuck on Earth. That was just a small data cache. Who knows what we can learn from this beacon? What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. Like who? The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of Citadel space. There are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an Alliant ship. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus systems. The Attican Traverse is under Citadel protection. If the Terminus systems attack, it's an act of war. Technically, yes. But some of the species in the Terminus might be willing to start a war over this. The last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. We have to keep this low-key. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden Prime. Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Get down! I repeat, heavy casualties! We can't! Get evac! They came out of nowhere! We need... Everything cuts out after that. No comm traffic at all. 
Cisco's dead. There's nothing. Reverse and hold of 38.5. Status report. 17 minutes out, Captain. No other Alliance ships in the area. Take us in, Joker. Fast and quiet. This mission just got a lot more complicated. A small strike team can move quickly, without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. Tell Elenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. Engaging stealth systems. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you coming with us? I move faster on my own. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. I don't like putting my life in the hands of a Torian, sir. Nihilus is on our side. He wants you in the Spectres, and he wants that beat. Ready and able, sir. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck! We are approaching drop point two. On that note, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share this with your friends, hit the bell so you don't miss an upload. I'm super excited to start playing this game, and I hope you guys are too. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you guys next time.